everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is part of our review of the Corsair H60 2013 edition self-contained liquid cooling solution and this is the installation guide of the said cooler into the various motherboards it is compatible with and uh, what you're looking at are the accessories of course you have our unit here in the top, you have the fan included and you also have the kits for mounting it, you have of course the back plate you only need that whether uh, you're mounting an, an, uh, an Intel LJ1155 line 56 or 1366 um, motherboard. You're going to require that backplate, but of course, if you're using an LJ1111, it has a built in uh, kind of mounting system, so you don't need that, but you will require a different set of screws. Uh, one of these sets of screws is for the LJ1155 and for use with this backplate, but the other set is for mounting it on to an LJ1111 motherboard and here on the right you have the mounting kit for the AMD now the AMD is compatible uh, with AM2, AM2+, Plus, AM3, FM1, FM2 they basically have the same form factor uh, no matter what motherboard you have so you have only one mounting solution and you also have the screws here these are long screws with washers for the SP120 millimeter fan there uh, you can mount it onto the radiator and of course I'm going to show you how to mount it one by one and to uh, install into an LGA 1155 or LGA 1366 or LGA 1156 motherboard you need of course the back plate while you only uh, you don't need this on the LGA 1011 or the AMD setup and also you need these uh, mounting screws. You see that there's two kits. One is the LG2011. Well, you have the one that we're going to use. You have these long ones. Well, these short stubby ones are for the LGA2011. So we're going to move those out of the way. And we also need this faceplate. Now, first step, of course, flip it to the back, motherboard, and we get our back plate and uh, pretty much just adjust it. The uh, to match the mounting holes. The uh, largest mounting hole is of course for the LGA2000 uh, LGA1366 and uh, see there is a bit of plastic there make sure that uh, it's flat. It's essentially there so it doesn't uh, doesn't short your uh, system and just basically align there right in the back. Let me just position that There you go, almost there. And oh, I, I got it backwards. If you notice, there's uh, this one with the grooves there. It ma it has to match along those two things there. And almost there. Oh, it's a bit. It's not as. There you go. It has to be really at the base there. Just so it will, there's no clearance issues, and there you go. Perfect. And now, of course, we flip it to the other side. And you will see, oh, it fell off. So, might as well just mount it like this then. Or you can keep on holding it while you're aligning it. There you go. Same thing. That would have been that would have been better as long as you see it uh, protrude there that means we are ready to mount it and of course make sure you have your CPU in there it already has a pre-applied thermal paste on the uh, cooler itself so you don't really need any of the uh, you don't need to apply any thermal paste but of course for the purpose of our testing we are going to apply thermal paste later on and then you just take the long screws and just uh, screw them in place It is actually easier to do this while when it is inside your case so that it is already upright and then just lock it or you can do this so that you don't have to hold it at the back while you're screwing it once these kind of standoffs are in place you don't need to kind of hold it in the back so you can just put in the put in your motherboard inside the case which is I'm going to do next I'm going to show you that since so the next step 
actually involves uh, mounting the radiator first before we mount it onto the CPU itself. All right, I have taken the radiator here and screwed it onto the case. Uh, as you can see, I have the fan here as an intake and then the radiator. With this uh, setup, you can, you can you can use the uh, long screw with the washer to mount both the fan and the radiator onto your case. Now, I would only recommend this setup. This is actually the default setup and also what Corsair recommends. Uh, I would recommend this setup only if you have a case that has an exhaust on the top, which is most gaming cases. But if you have something like a generic case, such as this one, I would suggest mounting it uh, with the uh, fan here at the front blowing exhaust in the rear because uh, as you know heat rises and uh, since there is no exhaust here at the top in this particular case and cases like uh, that are that don't have an exhaust on the top uh, heat can accumulate on the top and your temperature will rise so in that case I would suggest mounting the fan as an exhaust pushing the air out rather than pushing the air in which is a default position also if you notice I have the radiator hose at the bottom this is also the re recommended position uh, compared to the one having it on top now of course depending again on your case some cases don't have enough clearance for the reservoir of the radiator here at the bottom so you might have to match on the top there's more space there it's really up to you but this is the optimal setup on a case that uh, ha allows it. You can also mount it at the top. You have a 120 millimeter radiator there, uh, mounted for radiator there. Also here in the front, if your case is small enough that it will fit. Now, if you are to mount uh, the radiator outside, uh, rather the radiator directly here with the fan as an exhaust, you will need, uh, unfortunately, there are no screws uh, included in there. So you will need screws such as this one, which uh, is a tiny bit of screw here so that you can mount the radiator on the case and then mount the fan onto the radiator on the inside. Now, the next step now is of course to install your motherboard. All right, so after you have chosen how you're going to mount your radiator, it's now time to of course mount it, uh, mount the Corsair H60 onto your motherboard. Now, usually I do this inside the case, but um, I want to show you guys something which is, a lot more convenient and easier to see with the motherboard outside the case compared to when uh, it, it is already uh, finished. Well, you get you get idea uh, once uh, I finish uh, putting it in there. Now I have here the LG eleven fifty five and I have the standoffs. And if you notice, I have the backplate here. This is the only motherboard that requires a backplate. The AMD and the two thousand eleven doesn't require a backplate. But the LG 1155 and LG 1156 does. I keep on repeating myself because people keep on asking the same questions in every video we do. And, you know, it's in the video. You have to watch the video to understand it fully. So I'm just repeating it again just so people who don't watch the video will skip to this point will understand uh, what I'm saying. So, again, to recap, I have the LG 1155 here. I have the back plate here. As you can see, it is loose even though I have tightened the standoffs here. And uh, that isn't an issue. It will actually not be a problem. As you can see there, uh, there is a little bit of space. Let me just push it at what it looks like. Uh, a little bit hard to see, but maybe there. You can see there. Even though it's thoroughly screwed, in, even if it's thoroughly screwed, let me make sure it's completely screwed in place there. Actually, this one isn't. That's why it's loose. But uh, I'm sure what it looks like once it is. You just need to use your hands. As you can see there, it's completely screwed. But there's still some slack in there. That is not a problem. It will tighten up once you screw in the uh, unit itself onto there. Of course, uh, it already has a pre-applied thermal paste, but uh, you can apply thermal paste before you do this, of course, if you are going to redo that. And as you can see here, I have applied the uh, mounting. Let me just remove that because this is magnetic. And compared to the H100, which had this mounting, the old H80, which actually had to be screwed in place, uh, and especially the old H60, this one is now magnetic, and you just basically lay it out. This is the Intel one, which is compatible with all Intel sockets. Once it's there, it's uh, easily removable because it's just magnet, and you just basically align it to the mounting holes. And uh, since it's not completely screwed, that means there's it's easier to put in than the H100 and the H80 because there's a little bit of slack in there provided. But once you've locked it in place. With these thumb screws, it is very easy to just lock it in place. Now, I suggest doing this in a crisscross fashion. 
not completely locking it uh, one area. You have to lock it one uh, rather slowly, 25% each side, so that you have equal pressure once you've completely locked it in place. There you go. I'm just doing a rough locking thing here. It's up to you completely. And once that is done, of course, let me just rotate the motherboard here. And don't forget, there is a plastic cover on this uh, pump right here. So make sure you remove that. You can see the Corsair logo. And you take the pump uh, three pin connector and plug it in to any of the fan headers as long as you make sure that it is being supplied with a full 12 volt that means in the BIOS you go in there and then make sure that the smart fan is disabled or uh, or any setting you have in your motherboard some some motherboards have different options but any fan control option has to be disabled on on the plug that whatever plug you decide to plug in the pump for that you want to make sure that it has the maximum 12 volt voltage flowing through there so that your pump is flowing in the maximum uh, flow it could be and as you can see there I'm going to demonstrate the back here that is no longer a slack see there as much as I pull that it doesn't move because once you secure the thumb screw here in the front that is completely secure there it is not there's no more there's no slack in there so no worry that was by design uh, Corsair did uh, that locking mechanism by design decided to do that it is not a flaw in this design it is simply uh, so that it is much easier to mount the mounting plate onto your motherboard compared to the H80 and H100 it's actually an improvement now I'm going to remove this now and going to show you what it looks like on an AMD socket on an AMD motherboard, you will need the built-in backplate and mounting mechanism that is in place by default on AMD motherboards in order to mount the Corsair H60. As you can see there, it has that AM3 uh, locking mechanism here on each end and also the backplate is in place. Before you proceed, of course, you need to assemble the mounting mechanism on top of the pump first and then you can put in your CPU and then put in the Corsair H60. Here you have the pump unit and the AMD mounting mechanism. You have these two sort of, uh, if you've seen those uh, luncheon meats or those canned meats, they usually come with keys that look like this. So uh, you'll need two of these and of course the uh, mounting cover there. It is magnetic like the Intel one so it stays in place. And then take these keys and the locking screw on top. You only need two of these. You, uh, Corsair provides you four with total. Uh, of course, you need four of those for the Intel, but you only need two for the AMD. Just put it in, not completely locking it in place. Just keep it loose because uh, you just need to put it in and then lock it later onto the motherboard. So, there we go. I'm just uh, putting it in lightly like so. Just enough so there's enough wiggle room in there to put it into the motherboard. So let me take my motherboard, put it in the CPU, and uh, plug it in there. All right, so I have my pump positioned in there, and I have uh, the locking mechanism right on top of it. Of course, apply your thermal paste. If you're not uh, applying your own thermal paste, it already has a pre applied thermal paste. Once again, you just need to put it on top, and then once you kind of Position it onto the locking mechanism. See there, I can't. Uh, once I raise it up, motherboard raises up. You just need to turn it to the right, the thumb screw, I mean, so you can completely lock it in place. Of course, once again, like the Intel, you have to do this slowly, kind of the same, apply the same pressure depending on you're on the left side or on the right side. Or in this case, it's actually the top and the bottom. Part. So you're locking it at the same time. And then after everything is worked out, you just need to find, once again, a full 12 volt fan header. Make sure you set it in the BIOS as a full 12 volt so that it's flowing fully, the pump I mean. And then you plug in the fan, of course, as the last step. 